with him is Antonio Nieves getting set to take on what I believe might be a career defining uh, opportunity against Alejandro Santiago for the WBO NABO Bantamweight title that'll be August 19th in uh, Rochester New York and it's always good to catch up with Antonio how you been my friend how's it going my brother everything is going well everything is going well it seems like the last time I spoke to you you only had a handful of fights and now you're 16 0 and 1 you got a couple knockouts and now you're set to take on uh, Santiago for a title so uh, <laughs> time flies pretty fast does it not Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about the win against Mojica back in June, and that was for the vacant NABO title. I know um, that's because the title was stripped from uh, Santiago in May for that fail, failure to defend. Uh, you, you had a relatively easy time against Oscar. Um, leading up to that camp, did, did you feel you were flat out going to be able to just kind of grind it out and outbox him? We, we didn't know what to expect from him because we didn't really see much... Um, with his fight against uh, John Peterman. Yeah. We just pretty much saw he, he had control of that fight from the beginning to the end. So we didn't know how to expect when we were able to hit him with the big shots. And I took my hat off to him, and I, I hit him with some real big shots, and he kept coming. And so we, we continued to box and uh, box our way to our big shots, and uh, we got the W at the end of the day. What'd you take away from that fight? I mean, obviously, they're not always going to go down. They're going to be tough fighters. But uh, what'd you learn from that fight? Is, is I learned, you know, how to... Because we went 10 rounds, and that was my first time going 10 rounds. Pretty much, I learned, you know, that got to stay focused at all at all times, you know? Um, we had a tough opponent. He, he took every shot like like it was nothing. And, and I just had to stay focused and stay calm no matter what was going on and and uh, mental strength came came uh, real handy in that fight you know because with the type of pressure that he kept that, that he was putting on you know um, some people would would be like wow he's not going down they start not they start their mind started going different ways <laughs> but mentally strength uh, I got that from that fight you know staying calm staying mentally strong and, and sticking to my game plan yeah not, not letting the the whole of him not getting hurt or anything get to me. Uh, you, you know, you bring up an interesting point, too, because when a guy's tough, and even if you're out working him, and he's taking every single solitary shot, maybe you start to say to yourself, okay, uh, do I deviate from plan A? Do I stay patient and just stay committed and do what I'm supposed to do? Or do I go from plan A to plan B? And sometimes if you go to plan A to plan B and something's working for you, that's kind of when all of a sudden you can get unraveled. You can get caught. Uh, you can give up a round or two. The whole tide, uh, the complexion of a fight can change. So you mentioned that you really had to be mentally tough in that fight, in that 10-rounder against Mojica. I think that's I think that's a pretty uh, interesting point you bring up because I think a lot of times uh, young fighters, and I'm not talking age-wise, but maybe just young fighters who don't have a lot of ring time, not yourself, uh, they might deviate and and because they don't have the patience they don't want to stick to what their uh, corner uh, told them so uh, I, I do I do find that pretty interesting and I think you know the, the way you look at it you you're you're not a, a young fighter anymore so you do have that ring time you do have that experience and I guess uh you know the the intelligence in that situation kind of prevailed for you and obviously it helped you because you stuck with the game plan yeah sometimes when you get to fights like that people tend to to start panicking and and if, instead of continuing boxing to try to bang out and like you said you get caught up into the wrong game and, and the, the fight could switch up in one round and you get caught with something big instead of you you know sticking to what you're doing in boxing you want to start brawling with a brawler and boom there you go fight changes but mental you know keeping that mental stress in there and, and listening to your corner and listening to what they're telling you trusting your corners like continue to box and that's that's something major that we always work on you know work sure that we're in there we're mentally sharp have our boxing iq always is our priority always have your boxing iq on, on the first list um 
Which kind of brings me up to this. We always talk about when a fighter has a big win and sometimes when they have a loss, uh, they learn a lot. And again, uh, a couple minutes with uh, undefeated Bantamweight Antonio Nieves set to take on Alejandro Santiago for the WBO and ABO Bantamweight title. Again, Antonio, uh, 16-0 and 1-8 knockouts. Kind enough to join us on a Friday edition of Double Job Radio. Rich Canoon is here. Go back to the fight against Young where you fought to a draw. Uh, you were in control in that fight until the final rounds. Uh, I, I'm wondering, to me, that fight was kind of a good measuring stick uh, when you really look at two prospects at the time. But that, that to me, that's a fight where you have to walk away and you have to use it as some type of motivational tool. I mean, is that, what, am I accurate in that? Yeah. Like, after the fight, that just, that just, uh, it just brought me back to like, all right, we gotta get to it, man. Because you know, I felt like I let that I let that fight uh, slide through my hands. That so that was just again to the mental aspect. Like we back, let's get back to work. I know what I gotta work on. Like the last round was was my worst round. I got cut, and instead of fighting through it, like I said, I started to panic because I couldn't. The uh, blood was dripping in my eyes, so I'm like, I was panicking. I started thinking to myself, let me move, let me move. Instead of grind it out, you know? Yeah. That's the worst thing to do, too. I mean, for, look, when you get cut, they say sometimes, you know, the blood might uh, get get a fighter fired up if they taste their own blood. But, of course, it, that's a tricky spot, knowing where the cut could potentially be if it's under the lid or above of the eye and, and, and obscure your view and whatnot. And you're right. You know, you start to panic. Then all of a sudden, you're thinking more about the cut and the blood, and you're not thinking about your opponent, and that's a dangerous proposition. Right. And, <laughs> and then after after that fight, I just you know let's do it. like I just learned like don't worry about nothing, just stick to the game plan and 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 keep doing what I'm doing, you know. Like in the Mojica fight, I got cut in the last round, how about I again? But I already had it in my mind, grind it out, don't worry about nothing else, just keep grinding, and and that's what we ended up doing, but. Like you said, I did get a lot of experience from a young fight. Um, I went back to the gym. We started working on a lot of different things, things that I, that I already know, but I tend to forget about it, put it in the back burner because I wasn't doing, wasn't thinking about what we're supposed to do. And just, just I don't know. It was just, like you said, I did get a lot of experience from it. And now we're on track again and ready to go. What Was was Young the first South Pole you ever fought? No, you, <laughs> nah, that's surprisingly it wasn't. I fought my pro debut was a southpaw. My second fight was a southpaw. South um, my buddy, my fourth fight was a southpaw. I fought like four or five southpaws in the, in the early of a. Uh, of my career. <laughs> oh, gun, gun, uh, uh, Wisdom Gonzalez, the, the, I think the, the one and two, right? The, the Your first couple fights, they, they, they were southpaws. You're absolutely uh, right. Uh, yeah. When Wisdom, he's a southpaw. Yep. Uh, uh, I fought uh, Hector Gonzalez, a southpaw. Then I fought Puerto Rico, another Hector Gonzalez, was another southpaw. Uh, I fought Young. I fought, they went with him twice. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So you had a handful of fights uh, against southpaws. What's, What's your scouting report? What have you watched any film on Santiago? Uh, yeah, I watched. I watched his uh, the only one that we saw on uh, I guess on YouTube. Uh, I seen. Uh, I watched it uh, once, twice. Did, I mean, uh, any anything that stands out? You know, he 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 has good work, uh, good footwork. He uh, he likes to move with with his legs. Um, he, he tends to go into that Floyd Mayweather show. Okay. Uh, with that shoulder, looking at the back, you yep. know. Yep, yep. He's, he's not a conventional Mexican fighter. He's not a come forward fighter. Right, right. He likes to, he likes to sit back and, and uh, he likes to counter counter you when you come at him. So he's, he's not... He's not like a, a typical Mexican that does He's not come forward. forward. Right. He's not going to fight in the pocket and exchange and come forward. He likes, to, he likes to move with his legs. He likes to sit back. He likes to counter. So we have to... We have to be uh, make sure that we're not coming straight in. We got to use these angles and and catch them on the side when he's like when he tends to go to that to that Floyd Mayweather the shoulder roll. You know, we got to catch him from the side and not and not let him uh, not let his time us to counter us. Where, where where do you see yourself um, at, at with the rest of um, one eighteen? Just going forward, like what? 
I mean, obviously, you, you get a win. You, you get a win. That that's a major win uh, because that that should really jettison you even higher in the world rankings, and and maybe it sets up. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it sets up down the road a possible uh, possible fight uh, uh, against Warren. I I, I don't know. Um, or maybe a young, but where do you see yourself right now with the rest of the uh, w- with the rest of one eighteen? I just after you know I'm, I'm a right now I'm one hundred and ten percent focused on this fight. But after this fight, you know I want to continue to fight the best. You know who I want to keep climbing this, this ladder, and whoever at one eighteen, um, I have to fight to get to the top. Then that's what me and my team are going to do. Uh, we're going to continue to to work on my craft continue to get better and uh, fight every opponent like it, like if it's a championship fight and and keep moving forward. Um, like I would like to fight, I like to fight. You know all the prospects uh, that that are coming up like me. Um, I, I like to fight Rashid Warren for a title. You know I, I want to fight the, the best fighters in my league. That would be interesting because you got you got a couple of uh, natives of Ohio, right? Yourself from Cleveland, uh, Warren from Cincinnati, and we already know the pedigree of uh, Ohio fighters as well, with the Broners and the Priors and the Porters and whatnot. So, um, did it, you know? Did you guys ever fight in the Amis? Yeah, we, me and Rashid fought in the amateurs uh, last year. Um, we fought in the Amis in Cleveland. Um, we fought in the Cincinnati Amateurs. I mean, he clearly had more experience than me <laughs> than in the amateurs. But I think the fight, you know, for the experience to, to see what, you know, the, to fight an elite fighter like he like he was. Yeah. And, you know, it went three rounds. Uh, I lost. He, he beat me. Um, but, you know, that was the amateurs. Uh, and uh, I'm not the same fighter as I was as an amateur when I fought him. Um, I'm a whole different fighter now. You know, it, you know, time is going to tell when, when we step into the ring against each other again. And uh, it'll be a different fight this time. Uh, for the listening audience that's on the East Coast that really hasn't had an opportunity to watch you, as we as we close it out, got a bit of a minute to go here. Um, let, let, let the viewing and the listening audience know, what, what, what do you bring to the table when you step into the ring, and what should they expect from you going forward? I'm a... I'm a- Boxer puncher. I'm a great body puncher. Um, I got great speed for my for my weight, and I got great power for my weight. So I, I'm always coming to bring the fight. You know, um, I'm not in there to to dance around and and just make a for a boring fight. I'm ready to. I'm one of those fighters that when I get in the ring, I'm a fight, and that's what we're doing. At the end, it's a sport, but at the end of the day, it's a fight, and and I'm there to fight. And as we close it out, you look at your age, you're 29 years of age, so you're relatively young, you're starting to peak, you're hitting your prime, but is there any type of sense of urgency that this is it, this is this is a potential career-defining opportunity and fight for me, I got to make the best of it, um, and I hate to say to someone, hey, even if, if you lose the fight, you still got to make a good showing, in this situation, do you say to yourself, I got to get the win. I got to grab this title. I got to move up. It's bigger paydays, bigger venues, bigger opposition, bigger exposure. Yeah, that's always on the, that's always on the back of your mind. You know, this is, uh, we're fighting on Showbox. Everybody's going to be watching. You got to, and you're always thinking about the bigger fights, the bigger payday. But, you know, um, I'm taking it one fight at a time. You know, I got 17 fights. I haven't been hurt. I haven't been in you no know, real big battles. I'm, I'm healthy as I can get. Um, but yeah, I think about those big fights. I I know that this is a crucial fight, and but I prepare myself 110. Um, percent We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this victory. Uh, no matter if it's a knockout or if it's a 10 round unanimous decision, we're gonna get the W. Um, I'm confident in my team and and my uh, work ethic. But yeah, we think about those those bigger fights and everything. But we're taking it one fight at a time. Always the political correct answer, but yet you. But the caveat was you guarantee basically the win and the knockout, and then you say taking every one fight at a time. <laughs> I mean, the, I don't live for the knockout, but hey, I, you, I, you don't have to explain to me. It makes for good radio. You don't have to explain it to me. Look, every fighter we talked about this before. No one goes looking for the knockout, but if it presents itself, then you take it. I'm gonna take it. 
I know you're smiling on the other end of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't uh, put you on the spot anymore. Listen. Uh, always good to uh, catch up and touch base. You know we'll be uh, watching uh, August 19th. Uh, and again, you mentioned Showbox in Rochester, New York. And, of course, Antonio taking on uh, Alejandro Santiago for the WBO and ABO Bantamweight title. We'll certainly get you back on after the fight. Always appreciate it, Antonio. Good to catch up, pal. Not a problem, man. Thank you for having me, man. Anytime. All right, you got it.